bring in Sol Trujillo tonight, co-founder of the Latino Donor Collaborative. Eliana Murillo is the former head of multicultural marketing at Google. And Ralph De La Vega, the former vice chair at AT&T. Thank you so much for your time tonight. It's great to see all of you. Good to be here. Ralph, let, let me begin with you. When you think about diversity and inclusion as it pertains to Latinos, where are we right now? And what kind of metrics are you using to define success? Look, I think that the uh, job you're doing today to explain to everybody the significance of the Latino cohort uh, is key. You talked about population growth before. Bertha did a great job of that. But the thing that I look at is household formation. If you look at household growth of Latinos, it was 23% compared to 3% of non-Latinos. The household size of Latinos is 44% greater than non-Latinos. And here's the real uh, a statistic that we need to think about in business is the net household growth over the last 10 years was 62% driven by Latinos. When you have household growth, it is huge. So corporations need to understand that this is a market segment that is growing in population, is growing its uh, education base. It has incredible uh, family uh, characteristics in terms of household growth. So we need to make sure that corporations understand that and most importantly, put people who understand the segment to lead the segment so they can grow their business and provide great services to one of the greatest cohorts uh, that is in this country today. Yeah. Saul, you've been such a powerful advocate for so long. I wonder, are you when you try to convince others of that notion, do you find it easier today than ever? Well, uh, Carl, I'm going to use a word that I often use when I talk to Latinos and I talk to non-Latinos. The word is pendejo. And <laughs> pendejo means you don't get it, right? You're, you're not thinking right. It means a lot more than that, and doesn't I'm a, it? <laughs> I'm, a simple, I'm a simple capitalist business person that's operated around the world. And I always like to grow based upon where the growth is and allocate capital to where the growth is. So my conversations are always about growth. And in the case of the business community and also politically speaking, you know, you heard some of the data, but I don't want, I want to make sure that we all understand two thirds of Latinos in this country are very homogenous in the sense that they come predominantly from Mexico. Okay. So we need to not get confused by 3% here and 4% there and that sort of thing. Number one. So as a marketer, you, you prioritize and you allocate assets based on, you know, cohorts and you, and you do your Pareto chart. So number one, yes, you can talk to people and say, look, you're leaving money on the table. Do you want to be a pendejo, right? <laughs> Somebody that doesn't get it. And if I'm running a Walmart, if I'm running a Nike, if I'm running an AT&T or whatever it might be, you're going to find that when you look underneath the covers at those companies where their growth is, it is this cohort that's driving anywhere probably around 70% of their net sales growth. Ralph talked about the fact that housing, 52% of all net new mortgages taken out for a decade have been by this cohort. And I can go on and on in all the sectors of our economy to show you how the growth is. But here's right. the problem. People are not allocating capital. Yeah. If you look at the most underserved or under-involved cohort on boards, the single most under-involved cohort are Latinos. Right. And Period. End of story. And Eliana, you uh, have been at Google. You have looked at, at multicultural marketing in an important way. I want to ask you if you can put that in the context of opportunity. As we're thinking about the, the, the path ahead for the country, I like to think about, hey, it's the American dream. The idea is this country works when everybody's got the opportunity, equal opportunity to make good on their talent. Not necessarily equal outcomes, but equal opportunity. How do we put that into the context of what we see happening uh, with the Latino community in the U.S. today? I think it's really important to think about growth as a significant factor. The numbers are there. A lot of people are very aware that we are a booming demographic, but not always acknowledging the entrepreneurship in the community. This is a community, our community is so entrepreneurial, but the key there is access to the right tools and capital to be able to flourish. So this is an audience that is creating so many small businesses that is going to school. We're really advancing in so many ways, and I measure that as success for us as well. But one of the most important things is how are brands thinking about how to reach them? So the why is there. 
the numbers and the dollars all make sense. People get that. People saw Coco. They saw it was a big deal. Now, I think that the challenge people are trying to figure out how to face, if they're aware of it, is the how and the where. So how? Trying to connect authentically. There is no one pan-Latin narrative. Everyone comes from different places. There's a lot of diversity in our community. And even in that two-thirds being, I'm Mexican-American, there's a, a large representation of our community, but there's people that are first-gen, recent immigrants. There's so many different varieties of our experiences. So I think that often marketers almost think that that is a challenge that is so hard to overcome. But in reality, if you tell authentic stories, if you go meet your consumer where they are and understand their realities, what are their problems that your product or service can solve? Mm. How do you figure out how to have a conversation? And then the where. This is an audience that is heavily, heavily just over-indexing, as we say in tech, over-indexing in use of smartphones. We are actually more likely than any demographic to have a smartphone, which seems pretty universal at this point, but that's because we are actually more smartphone dependent than other communities. Mm, right. So when people are developing websites and they're not mobile, mobile first, that's a challenge. If you're doing campaigns and not thinking about YouTube or other video platforms, TikTok, that's where the consumer is. And well, so I think there's a disconnect between traditional marketing and where we are.